I don't think the vast majority of people understand how much spying is being done on their personal lives when even things like their car is recording things like them banging it out, collecting all of their health information, listening to their conversations, so on and so forth. Today I'm going to talk to you the case of why I think it's important that you consider using a VPN or some other way to obfuscate some of your internet traffic. I know I've talked a little bit in the past that I don't really like VPNs all that much, and people might also have the impression I don't really care for Tor. That's definitely not the case. There's some nuance to what I say. The thing is, is there's so much nuance in this case that I think even people that are somewhat familiar with IT won't understand all of the nuance and there's so much stuff behind this that I figured it was finally time to make a video talking about this especially since some of the videos that have done best on my channel have been things like the web browser tier list for privacy why VPNs are mostly useless I made a video talking about VPNs versus SPN and plenty of other videos that have a at least somewhat of a tinge of privacy baked into them why people should be concerned about their privacy so let's go ahead and get started now first of all I'd like to give a shout out to upper echelon he's an excellent YouTube channel channel I recommend you go check him out he does a lot of really good investigative journalism and he did this video recently talking about the insanity of price discrimination now I'm not going to cover the entire video I'm just going to cover a couple of things briefly from here you can go watch video if you want to because there is a lot of detail in here he talks about price discrimination that's being used against people. Now, this was something that I started seeing quite a while back. It was, I remember booking a trip well over about a decade ago at this point. And I remember checking hotel websites and using those hotel booking websites. Like I think there's booking and hotels and all those different options that are out there. And I remember like, if you go check and you can still do this, by the way, it's the same for like hotels, airlines, apparently Uber's doing it. Upper Echelon covered that in his video where if you log in from a certain browser or you log in with pre-existing cookies depending on what it is that you've searched for previously it will quote you a different price typically a higher price and one of the things that upper echelon covered in his video was how uber can detect that a person's phone was at like three percent remaining and they'd be in a panic to try and schedule a ride to get home and they would be willing to pay what he said the price in the video I think it was up to like double or triple the price in order to book a car right away in order to get home this is an example of things like price discrimination and one of the worst ones is first degree price discrimination there's three different degrees that he covers there's a white paper that he talks about in his video first degree is the worst because that is where there's so much data available on a person that they will change the price they will increase the price depending on what it is that you make and I want people to understand that they're not going to lower the prices for people they will start with their base price and they will increase it from there so if you make a little bit more money than other people, all the goods that you want to go buy at some point are going to have an increased price point. And I also really want people to understand that with AI coming and with all the analytics and data collection that's happening behind the scenes, which I'm going to get into, that it's really important for people to understand this because this stuff is going to get way worse than it is already. And one thing that I'll give people as an example right off the rip here is that I made a video just a couple of weeks ago talking about this. It was how not to get scammed. And I talked about this book in there called Dangerous Personalities. It's a really good book. And when I loaded up this Amazon page, I was like, why in the hell does this book cost $40? I've never seen this book cost this much before. And I looked around and I, I kept looking through their website. I was like, why does it cost so much? Now, if you take a look here, it shows $13 which I think was about the price that I paid for it. Now, what people might not know is that it was charging a different price based on the regions because I was using a different region for the browser. It showed a different price point. It's the exact same book. Absolutely nothing was different. I looked on the listing itself. I was like, well, maybe it's coming from some third party seller. Maybe they're all out of copies. No, that wasn't the case. It was just that there was price gouging going on. This is an example of price discrimination. You're from a different region. That region has more money, therefore we're going to charge you more money. So let's go and talk about some of the data collection stuff because I have a little bit of a unique insight from this as opposed to a lot of other people that make privacy videos because I think this will really help people understand what's going on behind the scenes here. Now I've had a pretty decent amount of exposure to the world of advertising, so I'm going to tell you there's a couple of things right now that people don't are not aware of, but they are used all the time, and these are absolute juggernauts in the world of data collection, especially with online world. The first of them is Google Analytics. It's called the Google Tag Manager. You can go and put this on your website and pretty much all websites these days use this because it's used to collect analytics. Because a website owner can use this and tell, 
okay, this is how many people came to the website. This is what region they were from. This is what browser they used. This is what operating system they used. These were the pages they visited on the website. This is an average of how long they were on the website, so on and so forth. It collects a ton of different data points and this analytics stuff follows people around the web. Here's another example. The Facebook Pixel, something else that I also have experience with because I used to run Facebook ads. Now, Facebook is, there's probably no other company on this planet that collects more data and more accurate data about people than Facebook. Maybe I'm wrong. This is a pretty educated guess on my part, but I think it's very safe to say that because of how much they gather on people that they have a very accurate picture. Now, I don't use Facebook anymore, so I can't show you like the Google Business Manager, but you could probably go find some examples of this out there. There are videos that other people have made, I'm sure, where it shows some of the different data points that you can target because you can target based on zip code. You can target based on where people work, like specific companies. You can target based on income levels. You can target based on what they specifically like. Like this person is a 35 year old guy who likes dogs. He likes, uh, let's say snowmobiling and he likes the outdoors and he likes to buy expensive things. And that those, that's all data that's being collected. And that's way more in depth than just that. There's a ton more data that's being collected behind the scenes. Now this all gets fed into Facebook's massive analytics machine. Now, like Google Tag Manager, Google or the Facebook Pixel can be embedded on other people's websites. And this is something a lot of other people do with their websites is because they like to use Facebook ads and they like to use something called retargeting ads. And I'm not gonna go super in depth with ads on this because I think that I, we could really get lost in the sauce and get off topic here. Now the thing with this pixel is it also tracks people around the internet as well. So when you leave Facebook and you go across to different websites, that pixel is recording all the different websites you go to. It records everything that you click on it records stuff that you're typing into the website. And let's say you go to 10 different websites, then you click on Facebook. Now it can see, oh, okay, we've got cookies here and we're gonna collect all the data, all the stuff that this person was vis visiting from these previous websites. I'm sure by now people can kind of get an understanding of just how much of an issue stuff like this is. And if you're curious, what you can do is go and click, I'm sure people, a lot of people now, especially at least people that watch my videos anyway, use something called uBlock Origin. I really recommend it, it's a great tool. If you go and click on that, it will tell you the things that have been blocked. And I can tell you on a vast majority of websites, you will either see the Google Tag Manager or the Facebook Pixel or even both, because a lot of companies or a lot of website owners will put both on their websites. And like I said, there is so much stuff that gets tracked with these analytics machines. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna cover here because I really like Gary V. I, I'm sure people have seen if they looked at my channel that I recommend him on my recommended channels down at the bottom of my page. I've got a list of recommended channels. I really like Gary V. And one of the things that he said is, well, it's a conspiracy or it's like conspiracy theory that people say that your phone is always listening to you. Well, that's not a conspiracy theory that actually does happen. Now, one of the things that he said is, oh, well, you just were typing stuff into Google and these websites just have analytics and that's how they found out that's what it is that you wanted to get, which there is truth to that. That is certainly one of the ways they collect stuff, but they also collect info just by listening in on your phone. And there's been tons of stories out there. I, and it's happened to me multiple times of where I would talk about something that is that I wanted or needed but I didn't go and Google. I wasn't Googling or searching for it in any way. It was just something that I'd mentioned in conversations with people a couple of times. And then all of a sudden, I'd see an ad for it on Facebook. And the reason I saw ads on Facebook for it is also because, like I said, I was using the ads manager, so I couldn't block ads or the stuff that I needed wouldn't work properly. But I would see ads for it, and I was never logged into Facebook. Didn't search any of this stuff, but because I had the Facebook app on my phone at the time, I'm sure that was one of the issues, and also because I was using a Google phone, which are way worse for privacy than other some of the other options that are out there. The phones listen to what it is that you're saying because they're collecting all of that data. And I know some people might still think, oh, well, this is a conspiracy. Well, let's follow the money here because money talks, bullshit walks. And I don't think most people really understand when you have such a large amount of money involved in something, these corporations are going to do whatever they can to try to maximize on what is there. Now there's this great article here from Statista or I guess sort of an article where it talks about statistics and facts for the world of advertising. It says a late 2022 projection 
estimated that ad media owners revenue worldwide would grow by about 6% to a record high $856 billion in 2023. The annual figure was forecast to increase more as the decade unfolds surpassing $1 trillion by 2026. This is going to get worse. The amount of data that's being collected on people is going to increase even more. We're going to go back to the car article that I was just referenced here at the beginning of the video here pretty soon. But all of these places are constantly hoovering up tons and tons of data. The ads are getting worse. And the case that I'm making is that people should be concerned about their privacy because the corporate spying has gotten out of control. I don't think most people really understand that their privacy is being rapidly stripped away. And a lot of people are doing absolutely nothing about it. For the tech literate that are watching this video, if I'm explaining things in a really simple way, it's because I want everyone to be able to consume this video and understand what it is that I'm getting at. I don't want to overcomplicate things for someone that's a beginner to this because I, it, this videos like this is important to bring this stuff to light so people are aware of it. So let me give you some great examples. This happened just recently. Assassin's Creed Odyssey player gets hit with in-game ad for Mirage when trying to open the map. So this is a person who paid for a game. They paid full price or maybe a discount price. They were trying to open the map while they were playing their game and an ad showed up. Now, I looked into this further. This didn't just happen to one people. This was happening to multiple people. And Ubisoft's bullshit response to this was, I can't, I think this is an absolute scum company. I really despise how they treat their customers. They ended up making a statement later on saying that, oh, this was an accident. We didn't mean for this to happen. There were some weird code stuff that happened on the back end. This was no accident and they bullshit people and lied to them trying to cover their asses because they didn't like taking the heat for it. This was very intentionally programmed. This wasn't an accident that it opened up an ad as someone was trying to look at their map. Here's another example. Hulu, Max, and Peacock are introducing a pause ads feature, and I'm not a fan. Again, another recent article. You go to pause your show because you need to go piss, and you get ads. Every 5-10 minutes, you are getting an ad break. You're getting blasted with ads despite the fact that you're paying for a service. It's this inshittification of platforms. It's the inshittification of the internet because there's massive amounts of greed and these companies don't give a damn. They're just trying to continue to push their garbage on people more and more. Now, putting aside the world of advertising because this stuff is a pretty big issue and I'm also sick and tired of advertising. And It's got to the point where I block ads on everything. Ads on my phone are blocked. Ads my desktop or block. I block everything as much as I possibly can. I do not experience the internet with ads anymore because there's no way in hell that I could tolerate that shit. Also, let's just point out real quick the fact that Google with YouTube is trying to force ads on people and they've declared war on ad blockers. I forgot to pull that article. I pull up an article as an example so people could look at it, but I'm sure probably everyone knows what it is that I'm talking about because there's been so much fuss about it. So let's cover some other things, other reasons why I think that it's really important for you to consider running a VPN or something similar. And by the way, you can go read this article as well, Privacy Nightmare on Wheels. So every car brand that Mozilla reviewed flunks privacy tests because they collect so much information. This is how per pervasive and out of control this stuff's getting in society. So let's look at the R next article here. Mozilla explains cookies and super cookies. Super cookies are somewhat of a new-ish thing. I know this article is a couple of years old. These are becoming more and more commonplace here as opposed to just the regular old ones. So let's just go ahead and read this up, read up on this here real quick so people get an understanding of this. It says super cookies are not cookies. They're similar and worse. Super cookies are similar to tracking cookies in that they allow a tracker to stitch together your visits to different websites. So this is very similar to how things like the Facebook Pixel work. The difference is that unlike cookies, your browser was never designed to store super cookies. Instead, tracking companies have found ways to abuse other unrelated browser features to secretly place their super cookies. This makes it harder for your browser to clear or block super cookies than it would be to block normal tracking cookies. For example, security researchers have found super cookies hidden in the browser cache. What's a cache? It's temporary storage for things like a browsing history, images, and code. Cache data is saved locally on your computer versus on the internet. So it doesn't need to be re-downloaded every time you visit the same sites, which speeds up your browsing and helps you use less bandwidth. Now we're gonna talk about how to deal with these here pretty soon. Somewhat straightforward solution these days, thanks to some different options that are out there. 
That's just one thing. Let's take a look at something else. Something that the general public might not be aware of. And if you're watching this video, I would recommend you go do some looking into that this stuff. Talking about fingerprinting. It says fingerprinting is a type of online tracking that's more invasive than ordinary cookie-based tracking. A digital fingerprint is created when the company makes a unique profile of you based on your computer hardware, software, add-ons, and even preferences. Your settings like the screen you use, the fonts installed on your computer, and even the web browser of your choice can all be used to create a fingerprint. And it goes way beyond that. I don't know how many people are familiar with this, so I'll just give a quick rundown of some different things that it tracks. It tracks things like the processor that you're using, the kind of graphics card that you're using, what your desktop resolution is, what kind of operating system you're using, so on and so forth. Fingerprints collect a ton of different info. It says the practice of fingerprinting allows you to be tracked for months, even when you clear your browsing storage or use private browsing mode, disregarding clear indications from you that you don't want to be tracked. Despite a near complete agreement between standard bodies and browser vendors that fingerprinting is harmful, its use on the web has steadily increased over the past decade. And I can assure people this is going to get much worse. It's going to become much more pervasive. We'll again talk about how to work around this to an extent because there are some different browsing options that are out there. And then there's things out there like this talking about how big data collection works. So let me also give some more context to data collection because I know a lot of people might be wondering, well, why, what is the end game? Why is there so much data collected? What is the benefit of them doing this in the first place? Well, it's because they want to continue to sell you crap is what it is. It's this hyper consumer culture that we're living in these days with all these companies pushing out constant garbage, trying to get people to consume it. The reason that they do that is because I will give you an example. Let's say that you are in the market to buy a new phone. Your phone's a few years old. Let's just say whether it's a Apple or Android, it doesn't matter. You're in the market for a new phone. And so you're looking around and you're shopping. It was, you're going to different websites, you're looking at things like reviews. Let's say you're looking at a review for the iPhone 15 or the Galaxy S23 or whatever the hell number they're on now. You're going and looking at all these different reviews. As you're going to those websites, the tracking, the Facebook tracking pixel, Google Analytics, all these places are collecting these data points on you. They're like, oh, okay, they're looking at a bunch of phone reviews. This person must be in the market to buy a new phone. And then you go to different mobile carriers. You're looking at different merchant websites, looking at the prices of phones. Then for sure, these analytics machines know for sure that you're in the market for a new phone. Now that becomes really valuable data. So. Facebook and Google, for example, sell ads where companies can come on there and buy ad space to target people that are looking for a specific product. Now, let's say that phone that's being sold for, you're willing to spend a thousand dollars on a phone and the company would make, let's say 800, let's say 500 bucks after R and, like R&D and development costs and building the phone and materials and labor and all that kind of stuff. So they make a $500 profit, let's say that's an example. It is worth it for that company to spend $400 Let's say even 400, let's say $500. Let's just say they, they pay it sort of like a lost lead type of thing where they would even be willing to pay over $500 to get a person locked into that phone for the next couple of years because then here's the thing, they're going to have, they're going to do upsells. They're going to get person, that person into their app store. So they're gonna be spending money on the platform. They know that if they get that customer, like you're an Android user and you're switching over to Apple, Apple knows that, oh, well, they're gonna spend a lot of money with us. And if they come over to our platform, they like what we have, we can keep them for a long time and farm them for a lot of money. So they're, it's worth a ton of money for us to have this person. So they are willing to spend hundreds of dollars in order to get you as a customer. Now, once you buy a phone, that data becomes useless. Then they have to collect data on the next thing that they're gonna to try to sell you. And so you can see how this is a constant data collection because people normally will go through life, well, I need to buy this certain piece of clothing or I need to buy this certain grocery or I need to buy this or that. There are all these different options that are out there. People are gonna be constantly buying stuff. And so that's why there's always this constant data collection that is going on. And to give people some context, the average person's data yearly, uh, it, the number fluctuates a little bit, and this isn't exactly, it, it typically floats between like three to $5,000. A person's personal data on a yearly basis is worth about three to $5,000 because out over the course of the average, average person of what they're browsing and buying on the internet is that it's worth about that much to spend ads to get that person to buy 
certain products. So that's why this data collection is going to get worse. And this is why we're coming to the main point now of why I think people need to be taking their privacy more seriously and using something like a VPN to help count, combat all of this data collection. So let's go into some actual tactics that you can use to help protect yourself against all of this garbage that's going on. So let's work through this list because there's a few things here uh, for me to mention. So as far as what I would recommend to obfuscate your traffic, or at least some of it, I would recommend you don't have to do this. I'm just throwing this out there as a suggestion is something that I think you should at least consider is encrypting some of your traffic and obfuscating it so that you can blend in better with other people. Because here Here's the thing, things like price discrimination is going to get worse. Once these AI juggernaut analytics machines really start to take off, first degree price discrimination is going to become much worse. The other two degrees of price discrimination are gonna be worse as well. The data collection is going to become even worse. The ads world is continuing to grow. The ads are not going anywhere. They're getting worse and worse. I've just showed some examples in that article saying that the ad industry has been on a continual upwards climb and it's it's not going to stop. It's going to continue to grow. Now you have a couple of different options when it comes to hiding at least some of your internet traffic. You can either use a VPN or you can use onion routing. Now onion routing would be using either Tor or the SPN. I've talked about this a little bit because that those videos have done really well on this channel. So let's cover VPNs real quick. If you're going to use a VPN, what I strongly recommend is that you come over to Privacy Guides. They have a section on VPN providers in here. I would recommend that you pick one of the services that they have listed. The reason that I would recommend that is because they have criteria for VPNs and it happens to be the same criteria that I want from a VPN that I would use. And so that's why I would say, just come here and take a look at the different options that they have. If you want to run a VPN, you don't have, like I said, you don't have to. I don't care whether or not people do this. It really doesn't make any difference to me. The next thing is, so if you want to use Onion routing, you have some different options here. You could use the Tor browser, so this is available on Windows. You can also run all of your operating system traffic through Tor. Now, one of the ways that you can do that, like if you're running Windows, you can run everything through Tor connections. I don't recommend this. It's really not a good idea. If you want this at the operating system level, I would recommend using something like Hunix or Tails or Cubes or something like that. It's really not a great idea to run this through the operating system level, but it's an option out there if people want it. And then there's the SPN, which I did videos breaking this stuff down uh, previously. I have a video, I think it was from about a month ago now, where I broke this down. This uses onion routing as well. I really like onion routing, especially for the nested encryption ability and also doing three different node jumps is really good for enhancing privacy. Now there's some other considerations to go along with that because if you use one of these by themselves, it will help for sure, but it's not the best. You need to do some other stuff to really maximize that effect because it'd be like making chicken noodle soup, but you don't put the chicken in there and the noodles, you just dump some broth and maybe some carrots and peas if you just go with an option like this and you leave out all of this other stuff. So let's cover this real quick. Next thing, you really need a, an ad blocker. I know there's a lot of people that for some reason or another, they don't run these. One of the reasons that this is just a guess on my part, because I know there was a shaming campaign that started a while back where I remember YouTubers were making these videos talking about how if you used an ad block, you were stealing from the person that was making the video because then they didn't get revenue. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. I think it's a bad faith argument. Maybe some people would disagree with me on that. And if you're gonna disagree, well, here's my argument for that. These ads add, add absolutely nothing of value to my life. They waste my precious time trying to recommend me garbage that I don't want and I'm getting bombarded with them. I'm the one that's actually getting my time robbed from me. And so I just think that the whole, it's a whole disingenuous argument to say that using ad block is theft. I, I think it's stupid. But again, maybe someone will disagree with me and put their reason down in the comment section. Maybe we can have an argument about it, whatever. That's. Also putting aside the fact that malvertising is still a thing and Google ads are still being used to spread viruses. I made a video on that recently. Again, we're just even a couple of weeks ago when SCP was one of the pieces of software that's been dealing with malicious advertisements where Google ads are being run, but it's not actually when SCP, it's viruses that are infecting people's computers because Google is allowing malicious ads. Next thing that you need to do to really maximize this effect is get a good browser. Now there's a few different options here. 
I made the browser tier list, which I recommend you go watch if you haven't already, because I explain this stuff in more depth than, I, than I'm going to here because this video is already going on for a really long time. First off is a manually hardened Firefox. If you take Firefox out of the box, it's not great. It has analytics. There's no ad blocker on there. The fingerprinting settings are not turned up, so it's really not difficult to collect a unique fingerprint. So manually hardening Firefox. Uh, Privacy Guides has a article talking about hardening Firefox. You go check that out if you want to. You could run Arkenfox, which is a hardening script for Firefox. What I typically would just recommend people do is you could manually harden this and then use one or both of these Firefox forks. So there's a couple of different options here. The first, this is my absolute favorite browser choice so far that I have used. I spent a lot of time running with this and these other options to really give them a fair shake. Mulvad browser is definitely my number one browser pick right now. That is like 99% of the reason for that is not only because it's a Firefox fork, but also because they use the Tor browser. So they took out the Tor features but it's the Tor browser, so you get extra privacy protections when you're using this. It's an excellent browser. I really like this one. If you want another out-of-the-box hardened Firefox fork, LibreWolf is excellent. <clears throat> another browser, if you want a Chromium alternative, if you don't want to use a Firefox fork, a Chromium alternative is Brave. Brave does have a pretty good uh, way of protecting against fingerprints. There's other stuff that people just, there are some major ass hurt people in that browser tier list video. If you go look, there are some dumb comments left in there by people. People were really butt hurt about Brave. Some were pissed off that I didn't give it an S tier and others were pissed off that I didn't put it in garbage tier. I put it in A tier. There's things like the VPN service. You can toggle that stuff off. There's things like crypto, you can toggle that off, but it does do a good job of help protecting against fingerprinting. And like I said, there are some people that for some reason or another, they want a Chromium alternative. And so if you don't wanna use Firefox, this is about the best Chromium alternative that's out there. Next thing to consider is your operating system. Now I'm not saying if you are on Windows that you should jump to Linux. It's just something that it's worth considering if nothing else. Now I st still use Windows obviously. I'm sure people can tell like I use Windows all the time and there's multiple reasons for it. One of the biggest being that I've been in IT long enough now and I know how to set up my computer that I've almost completely gutted the telemetry out of Windows. I've, I can set it up the way that I want it. I blocked a ton of stuff through a host's file and so on and so forth. So I don't have to deal with the tele telemetry garbage. <clears throat> that the vast majority of people do. Like when I hear people say, oh, well, I'm seeing ads in the search bar or this icon showed up for TikTok. It's like, well, I don't deal with any of that because I learned how to make technology work for me, not me being used by technology. I'm not trying to be mean when I say this stuff, but I also need to be matter of fact about what it is that I'm saying here. Now there's some other stuff that people need to think about here. These are some special considerations because we're talking about privacy here. First off, using these Internet of Things devices are a little bit of an issue for privacy. When I say a little bit, I'm being sarcastic. They are a big privacy issue. This goes from things like thermos, these smart thermostats to these smart light bulbs. Like if you go and buy light bulbs now, I'm sure people have seen these. There's light bulbs out there that have Bluetooth connections. Why in the hell would I wanna go buy a light bulb that's gonna fit up in my light socket? That would have Bluetooth, that is stupid. But I can tell you one of the reasons they're doing it is data collection. Number one, they're putting in crap features, number one, and they're jacking up the prices, but also it's so they can collect data, more data. You have to make some considerations if you really want a camera system in your house. Now I've got my own opinion on using cameras in a house, but I know there's some out there that this is something they would need to think about. Smart TVs, let me give you an example of that here. This is an article from Kaspersky, but there's a ton of different articles out there talking about this, talking about smart TV spying and how to protect yourself. The device manufacturers farm a ton of data from these smart TVs. That's another thing. AI assistants. So this is anything like the uh, Google, I think it's called the Echo or whatever, and Alexa and all these little devices, these little listening devices that are put around people's houses. Again, there's plenty of articles out there talking about how these have been horrible for people's privacy. The type of phones that you use. Now you can put VPNs on a phone, but the type of phone that you pick is really important. First of all, you don't wanna buy the cheap garbage $40 phones because you are going to pay the price in another way 
if you buy one of those crappers. Not only are you gonna get shitty hardware, you're also going to have to deal with extra bloat and extra spawn going on. Again, there's tons of articles. I've already pulled up a ton of them that people could find about how much of an issue some of these phones are. And then the apps that you're downloading and using because ultimately, now here's the thing. You can use a VPN or you can use onion routing. You can use an ad block, do everything right. One of the things that sucks ass about this, so let's say you've got a couple of friends that you share your phone number with them and you have some text messages back and forth, things of that nature. They've got maybe some pictures of you on your phone that you know you guys have taken like when you go out to eat or something like that. When they download the Facebook app or any of these other apps, what they do, what those apps do, and it, you can again go verify this by looking at the, the app permissions that are listed for those apps where it talks about what's going to be collected. You could do everything right and still have your stuff like, now this is one of the reasons, one of multiple reasons why I recommend people don't freak out about this stuff. Like you don't need to live in hyper suspicion and live in a little bubble. I don't recommend people do that. But once someone does that, it shares your phone number with places like Facebook. It shares your text messages because you're giving that company, when you download those apps, you're giving them permission to access text messages, phone calls, phone numbers, all every everyone in your contacts list, personal data about you, health identifiers, so on and so forth. Now what I am saying here is that there's a pretty solid case to be made here, and I hope that I've made it in this video, to where people now have a better understanding of why it is, it's a good idea to run something like a VPN or use onion routing, because the thing is, now, if you use something like Mulvad or Library Wolf, you're really well protected against things like super cookies because cache and stuff like that gets cleared out when you close the browser. And also you can have protection against things like fingerprinting. It's not 100%, but fingerprint protection has got much better in recent years, especially the Tor browser does a really good job with it now these days. It's still not 100% though. If you go and add something like this on top of that, what you're doing is you're, you're continuing to add this layer of obfuscation into all of this data collection that's going on. Because let's say, for example, let's say you're using onion routing and you're running things through nodes. So you're visiting 10 different websites, but those websites get 10 different IP addresses. And because the browser, because you're a, a well-informed tech person you're using a good browser here. They don't have those cross-site cookie tracking abilities. So as you're going and visiting these different websites, it's obfuscating the cookies aspect of it, but also the IP address. So it's going a long ways towards preventing them from being able to collect all of this data to create this picture of who you are, what it is that you like, where it is that you like to go, who it is that you talk to, so on and so forth. And so you're turning all of this data that they're client trying to collect, you're turning it into junk data, basically. Because it's not something that can be used for advertising because, well, we can't build out a good advertising profile of this person so we can sell their data to other companies. And then there's just the aspect that it's just good in general to be learning more about privacy and it's good in general to take your privacy privacy seriously because as history has shown, those that don't use their rights lose their rights because governments tend to have this thing where, oh, well, people don't care about this aspect of what's their rights, so we're just gonna go ahead and take that away from them because they don't care about it and we can use it to our benefit. And that's putting aside that I think that we are the United Corporations of America, not the United States of America, but that's an entirely separate rant for another video that again would probably piss a lot of people off, but whatever. Now, I think that is a pretty long rant. I think I've covered things pretty well if you have any questions or comments. If I didn't clarify something well enough, drop a comment down below, let me know. But I hope this painted a better picture for you of what it is that's really going on here, why you should take this stuff seriously. And with all that being said, I appreciate the support as always, and I'll see you in the next video.